Hello, Palmetto family. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, We pray that whether you are at home this week or you're traveling or you have people coming to you, uh, that this week is a special time for you to uh, make memories with family, uh, for you to uh, enjoy the season, um, particularly the season of gratitude and thanksgiving that comes uh, with this week. Even though on Friday we're all going to rush back to Christmas, we're going to run back to all of the the gift shopping and everything else, uh, we're praying that this week is an opportunity for you to slow down a little bit uh, and to enjoy the moments with those who mean the most to you. Um, so this is a special opportunity for us um, to utilize the, the technology that we have and the resources that are in front of us um, to continue growing in our faith together, even if we are not physically in the room together. And this is more of a positive spin, right? For the past couple of years, we've looked at this as like, oh no, we can't be in the room together, so we have to watch a video. This is more of an opportunity for you um, to use the freedom of time that you have this week uh, to grow with your family. So we're praying that these conversations that we're going to introduce in just a few minutes are that space for you to grow as a family in your faith together. So uh, to walk you through what we're going to do over just the next few minutes, uh, we have four discussion prompts for you. Uh, And we're going to walk through those. We have some scriptures that we want to share with you as well. Um, And at any point uh, where you want to start the conversation, feel free to. But there will be prompts throughout the video for you to stop and to pause. And the question will be up on the screen so that you can take as much time as you need. We don't want to give you a time limit, but we also don't want to Um, rush you. And we also don't want to make you feel like you have to take 15 minutes on this. If this entire thing takes you just a couple of minutes, that's great because you are taking one step toward Christ-likeness together. Um, So we've been thinking a lot about Thanksgiving and we've been thinking a lot about celebrating and the ways um, that we are expressing that gratitude this year. And Sean, you and I have been talking uh, over the past couple of days, trying to craft this and make it uh, meaningful for everybody. That's kind of been the the challenge over the past couple of years. Like, how do you take stuff like this and make it meaningful uh, for a broad audience? Um, And one of the things that we were talking about with Thanksgiving is that Thanksgiving often revolves around the things that we have. Mm -hmm. If, if, if I started asking you or ask my students on Sunday, Hey, what's something that you're thankful for? They don't necessarily go to like, well, I'm thankful for uh, my health and I'm thankful for my job. And it's usually like, well, I'm really glad that I have a car mm-hmm. and I'm glad that I have a house and, you know, the, the clothes on my back. I'm thankful for that, too. But I do think that there's something positive about that because it reminds us of God's provision over and over yeah. again. Like, sure, we have our, our jobs that help us pay for things and things like that. But ultimately, it's it's God that's been showing up over and over again, providing those things for us. Um, and time and time again, when we look in Scripture, uh, God has set up opportunities for his people to remember, mm-hmm. for his people to think about um the things that he's done, whether it's a, a festival like the Passover feast or or maybe it was a monument, like actually like, hey, you're going to stack up these 12 stones so that you, every time you walk past this, you remember what I've done. Um, or maybe it's a song. We're going to talk more about songs here in just a few minutes. But like there are these regular opportunities for people to remember God's provision. Um, so the question that we're going to share here in just a second, and I want to ask you is like, What's something that you do to remind yourself of the the things that God has done for you? So I'm going to kind of take take a cheesy, easy answer. Uh, that, that works. Um, Emily and I didn't get married till we were in our well, I was in my late twenties, mm-hmm. um, but she has been a blessing for me. Yeah, and God provided the perfect person mm-hmm. for me. And so I think back to, I got a wedding ring yeah. that I wear mm-hmm. uh, that reminds, and yeah. uh, when I take it off and put it on, mm-hmm. uh, it reminds me of that. And then of course our anniversary, it's right. August 14th. Right. Uh, and we always joke that it's our, our six months till Valentine's mm. from August 14th and then oh, six months. Okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so taking that time, yeah. not just the anniversary though, but date nights Yeah. and uh, those moments that we just have together right. where it's like, man, 
this is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, this God provided her for me. And there's so many other ones, but that one's kind of an easy one that I love. No, that's, Uh, that's really great. And I love that you, you actually made it about a person and not just like (laughs) some things that God gave you. Um, So this is your opportunity. Um, Whether you're sitting like on your couch, looking at the TV screen, or you are uh, sitting around a dinner table would be another really great place for you to do this, but go ahead and pause the video right now uh, and share with the people you're with. What is something that you do? on a regular basis to remind you of what God has done for you, what he's given for you, how faithful he's been to you. So stop, take a few minutes, and we'll pick back up here in just a moment. So Kyle, one of the things that's gotten kind of popular lately is Friendsgiving. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because for so long, Thanksgiving is all about family, right? And everyone's got to make these travel plans and they got to go see family. And it's good. Well, now, especially the younger generation, Mm -hmm. if I can say, because I'm getting a little bit older, but (laughs) they spend time where they just get together with their friends. Before they go home for the holidays, they get together, have a big feast and have a great time Mm. enjoying one another. And scripture is really big on surrounding yourself with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, We see David and Jonathan and their friendship. We see how Barnabas comes alongside of Paul when he first comes over into Christianity. Mm -hmm. And and the Christians are like, I don't know about this guy and Barnabas yeah. is like, no, nah, he's good, yeah. man. Um, and so, and you and I know we talk about this with mm-hmm. students all the time. Friendships and adults too. Mm-hmm. Friendships make such yeah. a huge uh, impact on our life. Right. And and who's a friend of yours that has really impacted you and your faith walk? Mm. So the first person that comes to my mind. Uh, now, granted, I want to be like you and go straight <laughs> to my wife because I feel like I need those brownie points right. sometimes. Um, so I'm going to okay, say, I'll, I'll change the question besides, <laughs> Rachel, besides Rachel, who is amazing for you. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is like, it's like asking one of those questions, like besides the Bible right. what book, whatever. Um, the, the first person that comes to my mind, uh, is my friend Corey Lee. Uh, Corey was, um, the youth minister at the church that I worked for, uh, in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, I remember, uh, I was just a college student at freed and like walked up to him one Sunday and was like, Hey, um, I'm majoring in youth ministry. Can I, can I help out? And for him, it's just like, all right, sweet free labor. Like, this is awesome. Um, But what happened was we really uh, developed a really strong friendship um, between he and I and Rachel and his wife, Addison. So we uh, ended up living next door to them for a period of time while I was working there. My payment was a house, which was Incredible. It was way better than a paycheck because I needed a place to live as an as a newlywed. Um, but we lived next door to each other, so we would come home from class, and instead of walking in our front door, we would walk in their front door, and we would end up spending so much time with them. Um, I, I can remember my first Christian concert uh, was going to a Ring Collective show with them after we'd only nice. been friends for a few months. Um, I, I can remember going to conferences. Uh, we would end up meeting up at Pepperdine at the lectures and all this stuff. Um, but it was all rooted in these really deep conversations. Um, and I credit a lot of the way that I think the way that I even do ministry now, um, to those like couple of years that he and I got to share together, um, cause he stretched me and I was at a really, f- uh, form formative. That's the word I'm looking for a really formative time in, in my own faith journey. Cause I was away from home. I was away from the people that I'd usually spent time with. Um, and suddenly I was in a space where, I had someone who had been in it for a while, who mm-hmm. is now helping me to become the minister, hopefully that I'll continue to be. Um, so yeah, uh, Corey ended up moving to Texas. He's not even in ministry anymore, which mm-hmm. uh, made us really sad, but he's at home with his family. That's where he's from. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Corey, Corey was a really great guy. That's awesome. So we're going to pause the video again. I uh, just want you to take a few minutes or a few seconds, however long. Who's that friend? What friendship uh, really helped you in your faith walk? Um, and talk about that and uh, just spend some time on that. Give, give a time of prayer of thanksgiving for that. Sometimes there are stories in Scripture that have meanings that I don't think we expect. 
Mm -hmm. There's this story in Acts chapter eight about the Ethiopian eunuch and Philip. Now, this is one of those, like, especially in our tribe, we go right to baptism. We go, hey, they went down into the water, like all of the things. Um, But this is one of those stories where you can see God working behind the scenes Mm -hmm. because Philip wasn't just like, he didn't just happen to be somewhere. It was like God and his spirit sent Philip to go be with the eunuch. And then at the end of the story, you read, he like, as soon as they, he baptized him, it's like, all right, hey, got somewhere else to go. He literally ghosted him. It, oh, that's good. Thank that's you. really Thank good. You. Sorry. So he gets, he gets yanked out of there. But it, it's this interesting reality that we live in that sometimes things happen that you just can't explain. Mm-hmm. And yet it happens at, at just the right moment. Um, and, and as, as, followers of Jesus. We don't believe that's coincidence. We don't believe that that's like the universe working in your favor. We believe that that's God's spirit. We believe that that's God's presence coming in and working in ways that we don't always notice. We don't always expect. And yet uh, when we sometimes turn around and see all of the stuff leading up to that moment, Mm -hmm. it's like, wow, God did that at the exact moment. I didn't even know I needed it. So can you think about a time when something like that happened for you? So there's been a bunch, uh, you know, an easy one, and I, I don't have names, but right. being in ministry, you understand there yep. are days where everything's going great, and then there are days where things don't mm-hmm. go as well. Yeah. And I can remember numerous times where just thinking, am I in the right profession? Yeah. Should I be doing this? Yeah. And then that card comes. Yeah. And it was always a card. It was never a phone call yep. or an email. Yep. It was always a handwritten card yes. to the church building or to my house <laughs> Attention of somebody, shop. you yeah. know, that I wouldn't, yeah. they didn't have a kid in the youth ministry or something, right. but just say, hey, thank you. Yep. And it always was just like, thanks, God. I yep. appreciate that one. My mm. favorite that I tell people is uh, one year we had gone to Impact, mm-hmm. which is a camp. For those of you who don't know, it's a camp at, at Lipscomb University. And we had gone one summer, and kids loved it. Yeah, it was great. It's a great experience if you, if you you've been there. And mm-hmm. so I was putting out the hey, we're gonna go. I've already reserved our spots. Let me know if you're gonna go. And nobody signs up. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, y'all all loved this last year. What yeah. what happened? Nobody signed oh, up. No. And so it's Monday morning because you know Sunday was the deadline. Monday yeah. morning, I'm just having a pity party. Yeah. Right. And uh, just not mad, just kind of like, I really wanted to go and not getting to go. Yeah. My phone rings and it's the registrar down at the elementary school down from the church. Yeah. And she goes, Hey, um, I was told to call you. And I said, okay, what, what's the deal? She goes, well, I was talking to our principal. Our district's going to be doing this feeding program this summer. Mm. And she said to call you and that you might be able to help. Mm. And I said, okay, tell me tell me what you got. Yeah. And our district was doing this thing where they were going to take meals out to mm. certain communities, right. and they needed help doing it. Yeah. And I said, uh, yeah, this is something we want to do. Yeah, for sure. We had over 60 different volunteers from oh, our wow. congregation, wow. spanning from children to retirees. Wow. And it created this program over the next few years where yeah. we were involved. We started a tutoring program. We started working at the school mm. with a thing called Math Buddies. And it was like this five-year yeah. partnership wow. that all came mm. because we didn't get to go to Impact. Oh, yeah. And it was that moment where I was like, <laughs> you got me, Lord. You got, that you got me. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having my pity party. Oh, man. And God's like, I got something better for That's you. Good. And it was just like. I mean, the phone call came yeah. right during the pity party, uh, and it was yeah. like, "Yes, Lord, thank like, you, thank, thank you. you." Needed that one. What about you? Sure. What do you got? Uh, you know, actually, one that comes to my mind is one that actually came pretty recently. Um, I was having just kind of an off week, um, and and you know, you know this. Sometimes it's like everything's going great, and you have no reason mm-hmm. to to be down. But just sometimes it's just like I, I couldn't couldn't put it put a word to it. Couldn't really put a name on why I was feeling the way that I was. Um, and it was like middle of the week, something like that. Um, I was busy. I was stressed out all of the things. And I get a random email, uh, from Bob Calderwood, Mm. um, who I've never met in person. Um, in fact, I, I believe he's watching this right now. And if he's not, I've already gotten an email. He's already watched our podcast this week. Like he's one of the first people to watch it already. Thank you for doing that. And I got an email from him um, telling me about a leadership um, course that he took 
years ago. And one of the first things that he learned in this leadership course is when you're standing on stage, uh, don't put your hands in your pockets. Because when you put your hands in your pockets, it reflects to the audience that you don't care. Mm -hmm. It reflects, you know, you're not taking this uh, with the, the level of seriousness that you should. So he said, you know, since then, I've always just noticed when people put their hands in their pockets on stage. And of course, what do I do when I'm standing on stage on Sunday? I've got a hand in my pocket and a microphone in my hand. Um, so he's, he's, he sends me that email. But the second paragraph, I'm telling you, it wrecked me. It was, it was him explaining, hey, um, I've been married to Flo for like 61 years now. Um, and he talks about the highs and the lows that have come with life. Um, and he just expressed his gratitude uh, mm -hmm. and his appreciation of, of what we've been doing and, and what we, uh, the ways that we've been serving the church and things like that. And, and it was just one of those moments where I'm getting an email from a man that I've never physically met before. We've, we've never had the privilege of meeting. And yet out of his grace and his kindness reaches out to me and says, Hey, I appreciate you. I see what you're doing. And he wants me to be a better leader, a better minister with something like making sure the way that I present myself on stage is as professional, as good as it can be. Um, and, and I, I literally, ha I looked at it 15 minutes ago. I have it saved as a note on my phone, just as like a encouragement from Mr. Bob. Um, because sometimes you need to come back to those things. Kind of like what we talked about a few minutes ago. Yep. Like there are things that you come back to, to remind you. And I know that that came in the middle of a week where things were heavy. I knew that that was God speaking through him, reminding me, Hey, not everything is terrible. <laughs> it's not a terrible week. Like there are people who are just out here just to show you love. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Bob, if you're watching that. Um, so for the rest of you, <laughs> sitting at home. What is something that God has done for you that just came out of the blue? What's something um, that he did that you didn't really have an explanation for? And yet now that you look back on it, all you feel is gratitude because it shows the ways that God is working on your behalf, even when you don't notice it. So take a few minutes, pause the video, share with the people around you and say a prayer of gratitude to God for those things. So you're talking about stories in scripture that sometimes just pop out at you. Yeah. Uh, reading Paul and Silas, uh, they're in a town mm. and they get thrown in jail Yeah. and they're in jail. And it says that they were praying and singing. Uh, and then we jump to the part where the miraculous occurs, where yeah. the chains come off and it's dark and everyone freaks out. And right. the jailer comes running in thinking yeah. he's going to die. And we always focus on that. But since we're talking about Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to kind of go back to that song that mm. they were singing. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what it was. Mm. Like, was it a psalm? Was it a yeah. a, a newer <laughs> a newer Christian song about Jesus? Um, what was what was yeah. that song? You know, and and how did they feel years later? Yeah, when that song would get sung. What about that jailer? Oh yeah, like he heard those songs and then his, him and his family are saved. Yeah. And a year later he's in worship and that song gets sung. Like, mm. could you see his excitement? Yeah. And, and there's something about music that yeah. just That's so grabs true. us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we always go to kind of go to music when mm. we're having that off time. So, yeah. What is a song that's like, or songs mm. that's kind of your go-to, mm. um, that helps you refocus on the Lord. Mm. Golly, I know. This like, is one of those like, can I you know. pick one? Like, this is, and I, I know everybody watching is like, how are you going to come up with one? It's I like, know. it's like we talked before. Like, we we need a playlist of songs. Which, by the way, if you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, there actually is a playlist mm -hmm. that has just a, a list of songs to help you uh, refocus on what God's done. That's just a shameless plug for some of the other stuff that we got going on. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's funny you talk about, like, is was that song a newer song? Was it an older one? Uh, was it a song that they had sung a thousand times? Or was it one that uh, maybe they made up in the moment and they, yeah. then, like, that became something, right? Um, so th there are actually, contrary to popular belief, us millennials, we do like some older songs. Uh, the song, It Is Well With My Soul, uh, spoiler alert, we're singing it on Sunday, will always wreck me. Um, mm -hmm. there, especially if you know, like, the story behind It Is Well With My Soul, um, it, it will speak so much more deeply to you. Um, sometimes you just have to sit and listen to that one because you can't get the words out. Um, but I can think of um, 
years ago, wow, I sound like that's been so long ago, <laughs> um, 28 years old for crying out loud, um, when Rachel and I first got the news that she had a blood clotting disorder, uh, wasn't sure if we could have children, um, and then two weeks later find out that she's pregnant with Aslan, the whole nine yards, it's a really long story. But I remember we were at Passion Conference that year, and uh, this was back when Good Good Father was a new song, and mm-hmm. it wasn't a song that had been sung 15 million times. Um but it was brand new, and I remember hearing that song. for well, We heard it a few times, but I'd never been in a room with that many people singing Good, Good Father at the same time. Um, and when you go from a season of I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be a father to uh, being reminded that uh, God is perfect in everything that he does and that he is the best father, he is the good true father for all of us that golly, I can go back to that moment and be like, sheesh. Um, but that's, that's one that, that I, I play pretty often. Um, now I'm noticing that there's music, um, that has, that that's not Christian music per mm-hmm. se that I'll go back to pretty regularly. Um, there's a band called need to breathe. Um, if you don't listen to need to breathe, you need to, um, there's a, there's a, a singer songwriter guy's name is Drew Holcomb. Both of them have a couple of songs. Um, one by, by need to breathe. It's actually by their, their, uh, their lead singer. He's got a solo project called wilder woods. Um, and he's got several songs on that, on that album. Um, man, I feel like I'm just like listing music over and over again. Maybe we'll create a, a new playlist for some people and, and start sending this out. Um, there's a song right now by Brandon Lake, and this is the one that I'll close with, uh, called don't you give up on me. Um, and his whole new album, uh, is a mental health album. Um, he was like, you know, I, I never thought I could write a worship album and a mental health album on the same thing. Uh, but the song is, um, uh, at first you think it's somebody talking to God, asking them like, don't give up on me, please don't leave me. But then you listen to the words and you realize this is God speaking to his child saying, don't you give up on me? Because you can't see what I'm doing. You can't see the promise. You can't see the ways that I'm already working but don't give up because mm-hmm. I promise there's so much more that you haven't seen yet. Um, and that one, that one has been the, I, I go back to it over and over again. It's still a pretty new song. Um, do you have, do you have one? I'm sure there's like a, there's gotta be like a, since I'm so much older yeah, than you, you've got a, a, a plethora of, uh, of 90s plethora. Christian. Music oh yeah. I mean, I could just, go back to you know, uh, the song that we sing, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. was the uh, the first song I learned when I was at Bible camp okay. because, you know, back in the dark days, <laughs> we didn't have projectors or overhead screens. You had to just memorize it. You just had to figure it out. And um, that was an echo song, so it made it really That's easy. Right. That's so right. that one's still. Uh, another one we were talking today that we're singing on Sunday, um, Blessed Be Your Name. Yeah. Uh, I used to sing that to Patrick when he was younger at mm. bedtime yeah. and uh, that song. But for me, you kind of talk, and it's... I still think of it as a new song, but it's it's been a little bit. Ten thousand reasons. Yeah, uh, yeah, that came out and going back to the impact. Yeah, uh, we were there. It had just come out, and we sang that in worship. And I think I still have it on my phone. Okay, uh, from recording. Yeah, and three thousand kids and adults. Mm. Um, and the praise team led it, and then they just dropped the mics, oh, and so it's yeah. just everybody. everybody like else. I'm getting chills yeah. right now just thinking about it. Yeah, and um. Also, a, f- a friend of mine that I graduated with college mm. um, had found out that she had cancer at that time, mm. and she uh, lived about another year, mm. and so she was in her early 30s. Wow. You know, that was heartbreaking for me, yeah, yeah. and that song, you know, talks about at the end, you mm. know, when the final days are coming, right? still my soul will sing. Um, yeah. And that just has really, mm-hmm. that song just really sits with me, yeah. and I just... Yeah, but I'm like you. There's yeah. like I, I I could sit here. Like I'm even. There's one song right now, and for some reason, I the the name of it, it has left me. I can't. But I can hear. Um, I can hear the melody just flowing through my mm-hmm. head. Um, and even that will bring back. It's like you. It's like you listen to a song that you really love, and you'll hear like the opening line, or you'll hear like the the drum beat of your favorite song, or whatever. Um, I'm not thinking about "We Will Rock You," I promise. Uh, but like you, you get this. Like there, there's something there, uh, and it'll call you back to a different season of your life. It, yeah. it will call you back, uh, which is the intention of a holiday like Thanksgiving. Which is, I mean, think about Christmas songs that we're going to be singing here in just a couple of weeks. I promise it's almost time for, for Christmas music. Um, we sing those songs because it reminds us of something. Um, it's, it's all about calling us back to the things that God has done. Um, so for you at home right now, 
what's on that faith playlist for you? Mm -hmm. What's a song that you come back to over and over again? If you're going to make a Spotify playlist right now of all of the songs that remind you of what God has done, maybe it's the song you go back to on a particularly difficult day, but you know that it's going to be a blessing for your spirit. What are, what's, what's on that playlist for you? Take take a minute, share those. Maybe you want to listen to a few of those tonight uh, as a family. Go ahead and do that. Pause the video. We'll be right back. All right, so we pray that this time has been a blessing for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, We wanted to make sure that we were creating something that would be meaningful for you, uh, but that also would be um, something you could get through without it taking all day or all night. Like we wanted to make sure that this was uh, something you could come to and maybe come back to. Like this isn't something that you can only do one time. Like this is not a one watch uh, and you're finished. Like maybe you need to like some of these songs. You need to come back to them time and time again. Um, So for our members, if you uh, are on our email newsletter, uh, you should have received a link to all of the resources that accompany this. We've got a written document that has the discussion questions, has some scriptures for you to reference. Um, But if you're not on that email newsletter, if you just look in the description of this video right now, you should find all of the links that you need. Um, And we would invite you to engage with some of the other content that you'll find throughout this week. Um, We look forward to being here on Sunday, but there's so many other resources on the YouTube channel uh, and on our social medias um, that you can engage with um, every single day. Because our goal is to help you take another step in your faith journey, to help you become more like Jesus. And for this week in particular, to help you cultivate a lifestyle of gratitude. So if that's happened in any way, we give God the glory and we praise him for it. Um, So we pray that you have an amazing holiday. Don't eat too much turkey, but lean into the pumpkin pie. That's the way everything needs to go. Hope you have an amazing week. Grace and peace, my friends. Happy Thanksgiving.